Well, thank you, Rich. Uh, it's always fun to do these webinars and things uh, just to hear Rich say uh, awesome things about me. Uh, so uh, that definitely makes it uh, worthwhile. But uh, I know the rest of you guys are here to uh, find out about cool and exciting stuff about the Citrix ADC uh, version 13.0. And uh, so this is something that is actually kind of a, uh, a big deal. And so uh, this is something that uh, I was really kind of excited about. Um, and it was actually something that was kind of uh, brought up because of uh, some other things going on. And so our marketing uh, people came to me and said, can we put together a, a webinar about uh, the new Netscaler? And uh, so I'm like, yeah, I'd love to talk about the new Netscaler. And then I'm trying to figure out what the new Netscaler is. And uh, there's actually a lot that has changed. And I think there's a lot of people that probably have some uh, preconceived notions about Netscaler version 13. Very well founded. Okay? Um, and then because the world has changed so much and because of the pandemic, there have been some changes. And it's not that we have a new version of the Netscaler but we need to have a new mindset about Netscaler version 13.0. Uh, so we're going to go in and talk about that. We're going to talk about uh, some of the uh, new things that they've brought about um, in terms of the life cycle. Uh, we've got the BLX platform. This is something that uh, is somewhat new going back uh, about a year ago that this came out. A lot of people being able to go in and take advantage of this. And then there's some, uh, really nice and new things really related to some security enhancements. Uh, so uh, advanced authentication, advanced authentication and what that does for management of the Netscaler. Uh, this is something a lot of people have been asking about for many generations. And uh, unfortunately, we've not necessarily had a good answer for that. Now we do. Uh, and so uh, there's a lot of exciting things here that we're going to go in and cover. Uh, should be able to go in and kind of work through the theory of this spend a uh, little bit of time talking about this and then go in and actually uh, demo some of this, show you a little bit of the behind the scenes, what the new version of 13.0 looks like and uh, where certain things are going uh, with this. So um, if you guys are, uh, have been around the Netsco for any length of time, then you're probably familiar with the different platforms. Uh, we've had MPX be kind of the uh, cornerstone of what a Netscaler was back in the day. Um, and then uh, kind of the enhancement of that was the VPX. We've had uh, the SDX come in there. That is a hardware, uh, hardware net scaler from Citrix. And then we get these virtual instances that run on top of it. Um, um, and then uh, still kind of in the net scaler era there going back uh, probably about three years ago, we started to see the CPX uh, come into play. And the idea was that there's a lot of cool functionality with the Netscaler. Uh, there's a lot of cool functionality coming about as we move into the ADC era. Uh, so yeah, it's the same product. Naming convention kind of gives a little bit of a historical significance there, but there's a lot of cool stuff there. There's a lot of stuff to be excited about. And who gets excited about it is actually very different. Uh, like Rich said, this is a Swiss army knife of uh, networking tools. And uh, in the Swiss Army knife, you may just want a blade to cut something. You may want the little screwdrivers that are in there. And sometimes people want very different things. One of the big things that happens is we get into this as a networking appliance and we say, okay, I'm going to go do the net scaler. I'm going to be, you know, setting up the past traffic and I'm going to go load balance a whole bunch of stuff. Well, that's great. Uh, but you're just scratching the surface on what we can do. There's a lot of optimization. There's a lot of above and beyond that we can go in and bring into this. And I'll be quite honest with you guys, it scares me to death. Uh, because what happens is as a networking guy, or even as a virtualization guy, I'm not an application guy. So when you go in and talk about let's optimize an application or let's go in and do some stuff for a specific application, that's very scary. And that has been a fear that I live with. It's a fear that a lot of Nesco admins live with the whole life cycle of MPX and VPX and SDX. Citrix has gone in and said, okay, what if we got rid of all the networking side? What if we created a net scaler component specifically for those that are the application developers? What if we could integrate this into your DevOps life cycle? And so CPX is actually the answer to that. Get rid of the networking, spin up a containerized net scaler, and then give the application guys not the stuff that keeps them up at night, 
they don't want to talk about IP addresses. They don't want to talk about routing and all the you know, ports and port configurations. That scares them. What if we separate that out? What if we as traditional guys work with our traditional MPX, SDX, and VPX? And what if we gave them a containerized Netscaler and let them go in and do some stuff with it? And so uh, go in and make it very easy to pass traffic in and out. Don't overburden them with the uh, networking headaches. And then what if we went in and made it where they can go in and do their content switching? They can do their optimization. They can do their rewrite and responder for the application and not necessarily burden the networking guys. And so uh, on its own, uh, it is a little bit different. Okay? It is a uh, Docker. So it's a Linux box somewhere. And then you've got a container running on top of it. Uh, we strip out a lot of the networking. We strip out the GUI. Yikes. For some Netscaler admins, that's going to be scary. But if you're a programmer and you're used to working in code, code is code. Now you're going to go in and code Netscaler commands to tell this thing how to optimize your application. And uh, as a networking guy, I would much rather the application guys tackle that. And so it is a great component that Citrix has added to the family. It's not designed to replace uh, what we've been doing. It's a great complement to it. They can optimize next to their application. We'll go in and do the networking stuff on the front end and really add a lot of the big scalability uh, aspects that we're used to. Well, from that, we've gone in and actually got a new component that jumps in here. And uh, this is what's called the BLX. And what they've done is they've gone in and said, why don't we actually have this not as a container on a Linux machine? Why don't we run the ADC as a process? So you can go in and stand up uh, a uh, Linux machine and uh, you, it's a Linux machine. That's generically what it is. What hardware does it need to be? Who cares? Uh, where is it? Who cares? So it could be a virtual machine. It could be on uh, uh, bare bones hardware, could be in the cloud. One of the big arguments that I've seen uh, about the Netscaler is when we go to the cloud and you go and get a virtual Netscaler in the cloud, it can actually be very expensive. Um, and for good reason, they've spec'd out, you know, high quality hardware to really make that cloud experience what we would expect on prem. For some people that might be overkill, getting a instance with a uh, couple of CPUs is actually a lot cheaper than getting full fledged Netscape. And then what we can do is we can go in and actually get a BLX instance uh, to run as a process. And so you just stand up a Linux machine, you add that process. And then we can go in and do all the cool stuff that we know uh, how to do. So now, if we actually need this in other scenarios, we want uh, the uh, bare metal performance in front of something. We want the uh, uh, process in the cloud. BLX is going to be the way to go. And so this is opening up a whole new avenue to be able to do Netscaler stuff in places that we maybe necessarily haven't been able to do that in the past. Uh, it works off of some of the pooled licensing. So if you guys have worked with VPX and even uh, MPX and SPX, you can do this. Uh, instead of buying a specific SKU and it does certain throughput, we can go in and buy pooled bandwidth. I need 100 gigs of bandwidth. We can buy that. We can set up a application delivery management appliance and then check in and out that uh, bandwidth. And then we can go in and either put that bandwidth on hardware. We can put that bandwidth on uh, SPX and provision what's needed. We can pool to VPXs. We can move it around as needed. And then we can use that check-in and check-out process with what we're talking about with the uh, BLX here. And so that is a nice process where Citrix is extending what it is that we can go in and do. We've got out of some of the rigid rigidity that we had to some flexibility with pool licensing. Where we can go in and use that pool, BLX is opening up another avenue to be able to go in and do that. So that's something you've probably seen come about in the last uh, year something that's starting to really kind of uh, pick up some steam, really need to go in and be able to kind of play around with that and do some neat stuff. Whether it's in the cloud, whether it's on-prem, physical, virtual, doesn't matter. Netscaler is Netscaler. The Citrix ADC is Citrix ADC. I guess the good news is version 13 is version 13. So we can go in and put version 13 on any of these uh, specific uh, instances here and then do a lot of the cool stuff that we're going to talk about across the board. And so that is kind of the nice thing that we're going in and seeing here. Uh, now, a couple of things that I go in and uh, uh, kind of clear up there. 
yes, I called some stuff in Netscale. We were talking a little bit about the historical side of it. It is the ADC moving forward. Also, typically the ADC comes in three different editions, standard, enterprise, and platinum. We've seen that change where they're going in and calling it standard and advanced and premium. The three-tiered process is the three-tiered process. New name, new features that are coming about and being a part of that, but the core concepts and everything are going to go in and stay the same. Now, something exciting that has changed, okay, is that we had this announcement about a year and a half ago, okay, where Citrix went in and provided some clarity into the different versions of the Netscale that we're working with. So we had 12.0, we had 12.1, uh, there was this 13.0 that was going to be coming out. Where do these fit? How are these going to go in and work out? And what we were told is that these .0 versions were going to have three years of life. And then we were told that the one version would have five years. Okay? And uh, so what happens is that can kind of go in and affect what version of the ADC or the next go that we're utilizing. So I saw a lot of people that like version 12.0 coming out of 11.0 and 11.1. 12.0 was a good extension of that. Uh, I've seen some people not like 12.1. You can go back and forth on that. Maybe you are a Netscaler person and you want a product called the Netscaler. Maybe you're going to embrace uh, Citrix ADC. 12.1 was where we first kind of uh, saw that. So uh, there's a little bit of a where do I want to be? So Citrix tried to provide some clarity and say, if you've got a dot .0 version, we'll support it for three years. If you got the dot .1 version, we support it for five years. And uh, that's great. One of the things to watch out for is they also introduce naming things, feature phase, and maintenance phase. And what that means is when a product first comes out, they're adding new features to it. And so uh, they're going in and trying to refine it. Unfortunately, sometimes trying to work some of the bugs out. Uh, but over time, we are going to get a better and better and better version until they say, this is a great version, let's uh, go in and refine this. And so then it becomes about adding more to it and more refining what's in there. And we enter the uh, maintenance phase. So you go about a year in the feature phase and then you go into this maintenance phase. Well, that's some great advice. Probably one of the drawbacks to this is some people go into this version 13 discussion with, oh, it's only got three years of life, that's not something I'm interested in. So over the past year, uh, hey, there's 13.0. Yeah, I'm not interested. They'll wait for 13.1. Why? Because if the next version comes out, then it's going to have a longer time period. You're going to be able to use that next version longer than you are the 13.0. Well, that kind of changed a couple months ago. And so what Citrix has done is uh, instead of sticking with this originally announced, here's the product and when it came out and when we're going to end of life and end of maintenance, they made a special announcement. Okay, I got the CTX article uh, up there, so uh, 24, 1500. You can go in and pull that up, and they change this. And they say, 13.0, actually, we want this to be something that's going to stick around. So we're going to go in and change this to five years of support instead of uh, just three. So where we might have gone in and said there's a little bit of a shelf life to this, such as has extended that. They've also gone in and said they're going to roll out new versions every other year. And so for some of us that are waiting for a new version for 2020, Citrix has definitively gone in and said, uh, we rolled this out in 2019. You're probably not going to see another version until 2021. So now we live in the era where the new big thing is version 13.0. And guys, that is something that's changed over the last six months. How we viewed 13.0 six months ago is in a totally different light than what we're seeing now. Okay. They do go in and say that uh, they're going to do two years of uh, uh, feature phase here. So uh, one to two years of this. So that's going to be last year and this year. And part of this webinar is about what have they changed? What are they changing? And some of the cool stuff that's in there. And so they are going to be making some changes. Uh, they are adding some things. And I think they've added some stuff that's really exciting. And so version 13.0 now has new life to it that we didn't necessarily have in the past. And so this is a great opportunity to really reevaluate how we feel about this. And uh, is this where we want to go moving forward? And so uh, there's some nice things that they've gone in and kind of put into uh, that conversation. Okay? So I uh, really like that. Uh, the maintenance phase probably going to be coming about either later this year or beginning of next year. That's where we'll really see definitively what this is. And then you've still got three years of life uh, left to it. 
So as far as the next big thing in the net scaler, it's going to be 13.0. Are we completely done with this feature phase? No. And uh, that's exciting as well, because we've got a lot of stuff that is new to 13.0 and matured over the past year. We've also got some really exciting stuff uh, coming about uh, uh, down the road. So that leads us to, well, what's next? And so maybe there's a 13.1 or they come up with 14.0. Uh, I don't know what they're going to call it next year. Okay. But what we do know is that we are in the era of ADC version 13.0. Okay. We're not going to get something until next year. There is some documentation out there that talks about a 13.1. Okay. Uh, they updated this in uh, uh, February of uh, 2020. So you've got um, a CTX article going and talking about it. And it says, hey, look, here's the you know, changes to how we're releasing things. They also go in and talk about the classic policy engine. The biggest thing that has concerned me over time as we've had the, next, or the discussion of Netscaler you know, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, now 13, possibly 14, the big question mark there has always been the classic policy engine. And we've seen a migration of features from classic to advanced. 8, 9, and 10, it was like that was the big thing. What changed in version you know, 1 to the next, it was about features migrating to the advanced policy engine. We kind of got into a couple of eras there where we were dealing with um, the uh, uh, classic policy engine for a couple of different features. Now, Citrix has renewed this push to go in and say, let's try to get off the classic engine. They started this in 12.0. They really started to emphasize it in 12.1. Uh, and that carries over into 13.0. What we need to see here is that there's some really good guidance where they are talking about before we move into whatever is next, we really need to get things ironed out uh, with version 13.0. So if we're doing anything classic engine, could be the authentication for how we manage the next dealer. It could be maybe we're using content filtering, which there's better ways of doing things than that. Uh, it could be the next dealer gateway. These have been some question marks for quite a while, five, six years. Okay. We're now starting to get some answers where Citrix says the writing is on the wall, 13.0, it's here. You should look at 13.0 and look at migrating off. Okay. Now, can you go in and take a 12.0 and say, let's migrate off of this into uh, something else? Well, no, not necessarily. If the new feature, the new functionality for the advanced policy engine isn't there yet, what are you going to move to? 13.0 is a great opportunity that Citrix is positioning us with to say, hey, look, here's some stuff that's changing. We should go in and use 13.0 as an opportunity to clean up what we've been doing. And guys, I did say 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and 13. That's going back a long ways. And there are some configs that we might have rolled out, and they stick with us, and they stick with us, and they stick with us. How we log in the next game? Got external authentication on the next game. Uh, classic engine in 8, and 9, and 10. It still works in 13.0. Is that going to be the case in whatever comes next? I don't know. Citrix is giving you some really good guidance and says today, or this era of 13.0, great opportunity to go in and uh, address that. Okay? Now, speaking of addressing that, uh, they are doing some really awesome stuff with this. So what we've got is we've got authentication, traditionally using the classic policy engine. And so we've gone in and had authentication for managing the Netscaler uh, and it's used the classic policy engine. We've brought in some other functionality and gone in and said, uh, let's use advanced authentication. Part of advanced authentication is the advanced policy engine. So that is really what's kind of uh, at stake here. Let's take this opportunity with 13.0 to clean up those configs, get off of classic engine, and start looking at the advanced policy engine for authentication, for the gateway. Okay? And advanced authentication is not just advanced policy engine, it's other cool stuff. So it's not just authentication the way we've always done it. It could be nice, easy, simple, could be a lot more. Okay? And so, for example, we're going in and talking about the classic version of, you know, true is NS true. Now we use the true in the advanced engine, but it also brings in other components. We've got uh, in factor coming in. That is a product of advanced authentication. The ability to go in and say, let's treat certain things one way. If I see this, authenticate this way. 
If I see this, authenticate a different way. This is really a uh, big thing. This is a big step forward uh, in what we want to go in and see from authentication. Yeah? And so uh, this advanced authentication, it's uh, something that was introduced uh, a couple of uh, versions back. We saw this with traffic management, and uh, we saw this with our AAA for traffic management. We saw this with the Netscaler Gateway, okay? and now by extension, the Citrix Gateway. Um, but we can now go in and leverage those concepts with management of the Netscaler, management of the ADC. And so uh, what's happened is we've had a lot of people that say, I want to secure how users are coming in and uh, managing the Netscaler. Can I do two-factor authentication? Unfortunately, the answer has been no. Netscaler 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now, when we switch to advanced authentication, we look at some of the things that uh, N-Factor is doing, we can't. I can go in and say, let's go in and put this in place and be able to say, let's authenticate uh, with uh, LDAP and Radius or Windows password and one-time password. Yep. We've also got uh, the ability to disable local authentication. Been there for a uh, while, but it uh, allows us to go in and prevent some of the uh, 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 authentication attempts where if we can't authenticate, let's authenticate on the next scaler and uh, maybe bypass some of the uh, authentication we're trying to put in place. And so that's some really nice things from a security standpoint they've gone in and added in here. Okay. Uh, also talking about the uh, security standpoint, one of the things they've added in is account lockout. If you guys are familiar with this, we've had a couple of CVEs come out uh, because of authentication issues on the next scale. There are some things that they've brought in uh, to help us with that. So, for example, we've got the ability to do a max login attempt. Okay? Sure, somebody may forget their password or they've got their cap locks on. They might forget one, two, three times. Did they really forget their password 500 times? Probably not. And so you could have certain things trying to go into a brute force and break in uh, either you know, local or external through the next game. Well, now we've got the ability to say, uh, no, you're going to go in and you're going to provide your uh, password and you're going to do it correctly. If you do it incorrectly, what, three times in a 10 minute period, you need to take a break. We've now got the ability to go in and do that. We can do that on the management side. We can do that with the uh, gateway or AAA for traffic management. So in some of these situations where we've really been worried about uh, some of the authentication issues, going in and actually stepping this up gives us the ability to go in and kind of uh, refine that and have a little bit of a cleaner say about how this is gonna go in and work authentication wise. So nice improvement that we've got in there, really kind of refined in 13.0 uh, to make the environment a little bit more secure. Huh? Um, I've mentioned in-factor. This is something that came around a while ago. So why are we talking about this in 13.0? Well, it came out in 11.0 as a great concept. And the implementation was a little bit tricky. We used to have these XML files to go and define, okay, here's a login schema, give me this and this. And then if that's what I see, let's move to something else. And we had to put all this stuff together as like a bunch of files. And it was a little bit of a mess. In 12.1, we kind of get some visibility into that through the GUI. So what we want to do is we want to be able to go in and see this and say, okay, let's do authentication. And here's how I'm going to go and authenticate. And then what we've got is we've got the ability to go in and in the GUI say, let's authenticate. And then if that's what I see, I need you to also authenticate this way. And so we can create a horizontal, I like to call it choose your own adventure. If I see this, let's do this. And I can chain that together. This leads to this, which leads to this, which leads to this. And I can go in and make that as complex as I want. I can also go in and add in some other elements. So uh, sure, authentication, give me a username and password. But what I could do is I could do group extraction. So who are you? That's gonna go in and lead to different things. Uh, if we're talking about the gateway, I can involve endpoint analysis. The machine you're coming from, corporate machine, we've got one adventure. You've got a non-corporate machine, um, I don't know. How do I feel about your antivirus? Good antivirus, we go one way. Bad antivirus, we go another way. And so this is a really, really powerful functionality to create this choose your own adventure authentication. Little bit rough to implement initially, we've got uh, these XML files now visible in the GUI, and in 13.0, we get an in-factor uh, visualizer. I just called it a choose your own adventure. What if we map that out? Do this, and it goes over here. Do this, and it goes over here. Guys, I'm drawing pictures with my hands. 
I'll demo this in a moment, and you'll actually see that's what it looks like. Go in and throw out a factor of authentication. Here's how we authenticate. Here's how it's tied. You can see it. It becomes an in-factor flow, and what we can diagram out becomes what gets configured. So some really nice things that we've gone in and uh, implemented uh, with in-factor. Show you a few of those here in a moment. Yeah. One of the other big things that uh, I like is we've done some cool stuff with the app firewall. A lot of people would say the app firewall is one of the most powerful features on the next row, and I would agree. Yeah. It's not a network firewall. We're not looking at IP addresses and ports. We're looking at layer seven. What is going on with your traffic flow? Sure, it's web traffic, but what are you doing? Are you doing malicious attacks? Are you doing SQL injection, cross-site scripting, uh, things like that? And we've got the ability to actually see what the client is doing and then mitigate certain types of attacks. Okay? We've been doing this for quite a while. So Citrix has had this technology uh, almost as long as they've had the net scale. Okay? Um, but uh, we've really been focused on web traffic and some of the XML uh, functionality. So are you going in and using web uh, functionality to carry out attacks? Are you using XML to carry out attacks? What they've done is they've gone in and added in uh, support for uh, JSON protection. So this is your uh, Java uh, JavaScript object notification. You've got these formats for a JSON response. Um, is that appropriate? Is that accurate? Is that correct? Is that malicious? Well, now we've got the ability to go in and create these profiles and say, let's protect the back end and how we need to do that. And so uh, they go in and bring in some really nice things that we can utilize to enhance what we are doing with the app firewall. Also, we've had active learning forever. So, you know, what URLs are we talking about? What uh, uh, cookies are we seeing? Various things like that. And so we've had this learning engine to help us go in and understand what makes up our application. Because a lot of network guys, a lot of firewall guys, no clue what's going on in the uh, application side. So the active learning engine has been very, very valuable. Now, we've got the ability to go in and turn that into what's called a dynamic profile. So instead of us having to go in and evaluate everything, let's go in and say, let's learn what's going on. Let's learn from some trusted clients. And then what we learned, act on it. Don't make me come in here and tell you, yeah, you did it correctly. Let's just go in and be able to roll it out. And so what we can do is we can go in and learn what's going on from the people that we know are not malicious and then have those rules apply to everybody. And so this is something that is new that they brought in. We've had active learning forever. The ability to automatically uh, apply these things, they're going in and calling that uh, dynamic profile. So a really nice uh, enhancement to kind of some stuff that we've had in the past. Also, something else that Citrix has done in this security realm is they've gone in and said, hey, we really understand a lot of what's going on here. What if we were to go in and use that and actually try to prevent some serious traffic? There's some statistics that say you've got 30 to 40% of the traffic out on the internet coming from bots. So it's not that somebody wants to go to your website and purchase an item. There's a bot going to your website trying to purchase items and get this. Guys, some of us have been affected by this. Rich and I probably affected us this week. Some people were using bots and trying to buy Kobe game jersey for the Lakers. Okay? If you didn't see them on uh, uh, Monday night, really cool. A lot of people want them. Guess what? There's a lot of machine traffic out there going in and trying to purchase these things. Well, if you're the vendor trying to sell something, do you first of all, do you want just machines going in and trying to buy things, or do you want people? Also, if you're going in and hosting a website, e-commerce or otherwise, are you providing that for people, or are you providing that for machines? And so we've actually got this serious problem with this bot traffic going out and trying to access data or manipulate data or brute force all sorts of bad stuff. Can we go and prevent that? Well, yeah, there's some things that we can go in and do. Citrix has really stepped it up. And so one of the new features in uh, 13.0 is uh, the bot management. And it pulls together a couple of different things. First of all, we got IP reputation. Uh, we know who some of these people are. Let's uh, go in and uh, block them. Uh, we've got the ability to whitelist and blacklist. We've got fingerprint, okay? We actually know what some of these attack signatures are. Why don't we just look for these and then if we see them, get rid of them. Prevent that traffic from reaching the back end. And so bot management is a new functionality that comes in the Netscaler to do a couple of uh, really neat things for us. 
let me show you a few demos here of what's going on. One thing to pay attention to, guys, a little bit of a disclaimer here. 13.0 is still in a feature phase. So some of the things I've talked about, some of the things I demo uh, are brand spanking new, like within the past couple months. Not necessarily tried and true technology, but if it is something that interests you and if it is something you like, uh, that is definitely a reason to get into uh, what is going on with 13.0. Either throw it into a dev environment, start to become familiar with it. If it is something you need in production, uh, take a look at it. Maybe it's something you roll out, just stay on top of, you're going to need to go in and update. And uh, I offer that recommendation for anything that Citrix is rolling out in that feature phase. Uh, yeah, it's great. There's a feature. Some of this stuff is exciting and you might want it. Just take it with a little bit of caution. Understand what you're getting into. You need to go in and stay on top of upgrading, fixing bugs, fixing security patches and things like that. And then eventually it's going to reach a uh, maintenance phase probably in the next year. And then that'll be a good solid version. And then we're just more concerned about either bugs we need to fix or security issues that might pop up. So a little bit of a word of warning there. But what I've got in my lab environment here is I've gone in and uh, configured a Netscaler 13.0. And so I've brought this in. It says, uh, I said Netscaler 13.0. It says Citrix ADC. I should know that it's a Citrix ADC. Okay. And so uh, it says it's the uh, ADC. This is the latest and greatest version. So this is build uh, 61. Uh, also, guys, if you go in and use something a little bit older, uh, there's some 50s in there. Maybe you'll see some of the functionality. Maybe you won't. If you go back to the 30s, okay, 13.0 build 39, uh, you may not see uh, some of these enhancements. That's how new and exciting uh, some of the stuff is. But I mentioned authentication. Okay, when we come in here to control who can manage the Nestular, what we've done is we've gone in and created local users and groups. And we've gone in and created basic policies to say, let's go in and authenticate to LDAP or to RADIUS. And when it comes time to bind these, it becomes a, there's only one place to go. And so what you do is you go in and it's gonna be single factor authentication and not much that you can do there. They've now brought in two big things. Number one, you've got advanced authentication. And so I can go in and create policies. I can say, let's do local authentication that's accounts on the Netscaler. I can say, let's do advanced authentication. Okay. They've also brought in what's called a policy label. And what a policy label is, is it is an independent bind point. It's this whole concept that we need to start wrapping our heads in. And so I can create this policy label. What am I going to do with it? Well, I get the ability to apply a login schema. That is the XML that says, what is this page going to look like? Okay. And then I've got a bind point. Let's authenticate users a certain way. And so now I've got the ability to go in and create authentication policies like I always have. I've got the ability to go in and bind these policies like I always have. So if I want to authenticate users in LDAP, uh, I can do that. Okay? And so this lets me come in here and be able to uh, bring this policy in and say, let's authenticate using LDAP. And uh, if that's what I want to do, then uh, I can. And so I can come in here. Uh, grab another screen and throw out here. And then what I can do is I can say, let's authenticate. So I can grab some, uh, you know, Active Directory user and say, let's authenticate the Active Directory. And then what I can do is I can go in and tie in what we call a next factor. And so when we go in and say, let's authenticate here, it says, what do you want to do next? And so sure, you authenticate to LDAP. Is that the end of the story? I can say no. I can say there's more. It's LDAP and something else. And so I've got the ability to bring in this next factor. And then what that leads to is this ability to go in and say, I need more. And so uh, I can go in and set this up. And I don't have all this configured, so this isn't going to work. But as far as showing you the GUI, uh, this is exciting. This is not something we've had from the Netscaler um, previously. Huh? And so for those that need to protect who can manage the Netscaler and we need to do things like dual or multi-factor authentication or two-factor authentication, uh, that's where this is going. And so the ability to go in and bring in this user, authenticate them, and then require two factors of authentication, that's really exciting. Okay? Guys, this is something we've been able to do uh, on uh, the uh, uh, gateway side of this for a while. So I can go in and roll out a gateway 
that looks like this and says, you know, give me a username and password. And uh, what I've got is the ability to come in here, set up my gateway. I've got basic authentication. And so I can go in and say basic authentication. How do I want you to authenticate? And I can bring in a primary form of authentication. And I can also bring in a secondary form. So one factor or two factor. The problem is it's going to be everybody. Now, one of the nice things is you've got a feature called AAA for traffic management. This lets us go in and redefine this. This lets us bring in a lot of other functionality here to say, let's go in and do things a little bit different. So let's go in and set this up. Let's control this narrative a different way. And so what I've got is I've got the ability to say, yeah, let's go in and do uh, LDAP authentication. Um, so rebind this. I've got some authentication policies. Let's do LDAP. Great. And I can bind that in, put that in place, and create this authentication virtual server, and then tie that in with my gateway. So instead of coming in here and say, let's do gateway authentication a certain way, I can come in and say, actually, let's lean on uh, this authentication piece. And now all those different pieces of what it was that I was doing come into play here. So I can go in and say, uh, let's look at how we're doing this authentication piece. And uh, kind of the evidence of this is when you log in, it says VPN slash index. Uh, that is my gateway natively asking me for single factor or two factor. And that's it. The advanced authentication implementation is that we come in here and what's going to happen is I say, give me the gateway. And now I'm at a login page called TM index. That stands for traffic management index. And sure, the font looks a little bit fuzzy and things like that. Uh, but what happens is this is AAA on the NetScaler controlling what happens, not uh, my gateway. And so what I've got is I've got the ability to go in here and say, well, what do I want to have happen? Sure, it's single factor. Great. So I can go in and say, let's provide a username and a password and uh, authenticate them. And uh, I'm in and uh, life is good. Got or, and then I've got the ability to go in and use in-factor authentication and actually put together the ability to say, here's what I want to do. And so I can go in and create, um, we dig down here quite a way, I can go in and create policies for authentication. I can create policy labels, you should recognize those. And then the ability to go in and tie those together. I can bring in login schemas and I can create this really elaborate, here's what's going to happen. If you're completely lost with that, the new 13.0 component is visualize. Look at what we're doing. Let's authenticate. Do you authenticate here successfully? Great. Let's do a group extraction. If you're in this group, do this. If you're in this group, do this. Guys, that's just kind of the demo that's in the GUI. But uh, if you want to go in and build it out, it's the same thing. Let's authenticate a certain way. And we can go in and specify all these pieces and tie them together. So a lot of really neat stuff that's uh, in there. Uh, one more thing I'll go ahead and show you. Here's the app firewall, another big security feature. We've got the ability to create the uh, profiles here and say, here's how we're going to go in and protect. And uh, then what we've got is traditionally we had web or XML or both. Uh, now they've added in a third one. And you can go in and do all three. You can go in and do you know, web and JSON, uh, just JSON, whatever it is you need. And so we can go in and create some specific profiles based around the back end now with a lot more flexibility. And then when we create these, we're able to go in and put these in place. I'll just create a demo here real quick. And then what this does is it gives us this profile of uh, all of our protections. And so if you want to see the protections, there they are. Some common protections. There's the HTML stuff. There's the XML stuff. There's the JSON stuff. Yep. Also, you'll see over here, we've got dynamic profiling, very similar to um, the uh, learning. What do we want to learn? And so we can go in and say, let's learn some stuff. And then this becomes, let's automatically go in and apply it. Yep. Right underneath here, you've got the bot management. We've got the ability to go in and define exactly how we want to protect against bots. We can bring in signatures. We can go in and use the policy engine to say we're looking for uh, you know, the IP reputation bot uh, IP addresses. 
tie all that together, create policies, and then be able to go in and apply that to protect back ends the way that we need to. Does not have to be a one size fits everybody. That is something that is really new. You'll probably see a lot coming out about that uh, later on uh, to go in and really kind of refine a lot of the security that uh, we've uh, added to the uh, uh, Netscape. So App Firewall has been there forever, bringing in JSON, a uh, little bit of a nice uh, touch there. The dynamic profiling, very, very helpful. Going in and combining a bunch of that functionality with uh, bot management only helps uh, with uh, some of those uh, protections and things like that. Yep. So I know that's kind of a, a little bit of a uh, abbreviated demo there to go in and show you a little bit uh, of this. But what I'll do is I'll turn it back over to Rich to uh, field some of the uh, questions that might have come up. All right, Matthew, thank you. Good job. Um, <clears throat> are you able to see the Q&A uh, submissions? Um, if not, I can read them off to you. Uh, yeah, I can go in and see this. Um, in the past, if it didn't recommend you use the VPN in a production environment, is that no longer the case? Uh, I assume you're talking about the uh, Netscaler Gateway. Uh, the Netscaler Gateway, uh, and before that it was called the Access Gateway, now it's the Citrix Gateway, uh, has always been first and foremost, uh, really the, um, oh, sorry, Jason, I apologize for that, or Gene, yeah, I apologize. Uh, sorry, I had Jason on the mind from uh, uh, Protection Center. No, sorry, VPX. Uh, you're talking about they don't recommend using the VPX in the environment. Is that no longer the case? Um, I would say no. There's actually a lot of use cases for this. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, the VPX traditionally has had some hypervisor limitations. And so some of the different things like we're limited to SKUs for 10 megabit or 100 megabit, gigabit or three gigabits. And uh, so when you go in and look at what you're doing production wise, that may not be adequate. Also, there's some stuff that we were doing in Netscaler 10 and 11 uh, with how we did SSL. You can go in and say, okay, I've got a three gig Netscaler and then we got to claw back what we can do SSL wise. So if that's important to you, that was a detriment. So they might go in and say, you need the MPX to get the performance that you want from that. Um, they have since gone in and really changed that. They're using uh, IR uh, SOV to be able to create a VM and give it direct access to the NIC. So if you've got a virtual machine and you've got a 10 gig NIC, you can now push 10 gigs of throughput. So Citrix has actually opened up the SKUs. So there are actually SKUs for five gigs, eight gigs, 10 gigs, 20 gigs, 40 gigs, 100 gigs. There's that whole pooled bandwidth concept. Can we go in and have a bunch of bandwidth and then use it on a VPX or SDX or in the cloud? And the answer to that is yes. And so they have really made this a much more versatile product. They've really helped the performance of it. And so it's really about a needs assessment. What is your need? Is your need to push 10 gigs of throughput? Two or three years ago, I would have had to go in and kind of say, maybe the VPX is not uh, for you. But now there are things that we can do where if you've got the hardware, you've got the networking for it, Citrix can go in and kind of uh, back that up. Yeah? And so that goes in and kind of uh, gives you the uh, ability uh, to kind of use that. Okay. Uh, Steven, uh, can I run a report on what classic features I have configured on my Netscaler? Um, not really. This has really been one of those things where the Netscaler has been very additive. They've been very forgiving. So the stuff that you did in Netscaler 8 worked in 9 and 10 and 11 and 12. Uh, and so it's been very forgiving about that. And so really we see a lot of the warnings, not on your previous configuration, but on new configuration. So when you go into a, uh, and they're not even going to warn you about this in 11.1. But uh, when you go into 12.0 or 12.1 and you say, let's do authentication the same way I always did it, you now get a warning and it says, uh, hey, maybe this is not the way to go in and do it. So it is very verbose about moving forward. It doesn't have a lot of visibility into backwards. And so this is where you really need to go in and look at uh, a lot of uh, what you're doing. Um, Stephen, my best advice is to pull your ns.com file. So copy that off of your Netscaler and look at it. Just open up in a text editor. And what you're looking for is the syntax of any policies. Uh, is there any NS crew in there? That's going to be a warning about what it is that you're using syntax wise that's coming from the uh, uh, classic syntax. Uh, am I going in and doing, uh, you know, request, response, and then my uh, protocol? 
or am I doing protocol and then request and response? Look at the syntax of those. And then if you see any of those, what are you doing with that? And then that's gonna go in and give you a little bit of guidance. Okay? Uh, and then, like I said, on a somewhat modern Netscale like 11.1, probably the big thing to be worried about is your gateway config. What are you doing in the gateway that's using classic engine? And then uh, what is it you're doing authentication of the Netscale device? Probably using classic authentication for that. I don't think anybody is still using content filtering. Uh, Responder goes way above and beyond. Been doing that for, you know, 9, 10X. Uh, and so anything that I would want to go and do content filtering with, Responder would have been a much better way to do that. And I've been given lots of opportunities over the years to transition a responder. And so that is a deprecated feature in general. Uh, the responder feature or some of rewrite does what we used to be doing, but with the advanced engine and way more efficient. So Stephen, hopefully uh, that helps uh, as uh, well. Okay, Matthew, those uh, are the only two submissions that it looks like we received and we're running up against um, an hour. So I think uh, unless there are any other questions, I think we're gonna end the webinar. So um, again, uh, just to remind everyone, we'll be sending out a link to the recording for this webinar that you can forward on to coworkers. Uh, we appreciate you all taking time out of your busy days to attend this presentation. And uh, again, uh, I'd especially like to thank Matthew for uh, uh, putting the time in to prepare this and uh, deliver it for you. So uh, thank you very much. Please let us know if we can answer any questions or help you with any future training. Uh, take care. Thanks, Matthew. Thank you. Have a good day.